Ah, January 21st, Sunday. January 21st, 2018. My name is Marcus Conti. I am a former sanitation enforcement agent and I am the sole pro se plaintiff in Conti vs. DSNY. Index number 101058-2016. New York Supreme Court Appellate Division, First Department. So, back to the bridge. Ah, uh, beautiful bridge, Verrazano Narrows Bridge here in Brooklyn, New York. And, uh, nothing really to add, just a little proof of life today, relaxing into the, relaxing into the bigger picture. We're fully submitted, and the date is now March 2018 for oral argument rather than February. That was by the court's choice, as I was told through the clerk. Reasons for which I don't know, <laughs> but will be uh, the case. Will when it comes up, it comes up. You know, March. I right, fully submitted appeal. The SNY answered. New York State Division of Human Rights failed to answer. I replied. I go. They go. I go. Now the court goes. So, you know, it's um, now that I'm kind of. Uh, have an opportunity to reflect on the bigger picture. It's not to say that we're not going to, we're not doing anything right now, and I'm open to suggestions for people uh, watching this. You know, uh, what's next? What sh <clears throat> what should we be doing and such? But um, it you know, it just occurs to me with a little uh, reflection that I was reading True Pundit. You know, today following, I don't follow the news quite as as diligently as I was uh, uh, recently. But um, you know, still a year and a half later, to almost a year and a half later, approaching the 2018 midterm elections in November, less about it, less than a year away. I see politicians already jockeying for position for 2018, and the startling realization that not a single politician throughout the whole debacle, the whole 2016 race where Hillary Clinton, you know, sabotaged Bernie Sanders' campaign, mass corruption, mass voter uh, fraud, election fraud from the inside across the country. You saw, you know, Hillary Clinton and uh, Bill Clinton and the Clinton Foundation, obvious corruption, obvious money laundering. Not a single person has ever, not a single person has been held accountable for any of that. Nobody. James Comey, Andrew McCabe, Perry McAuliffe, Hillary Clinton, Bill Clinton, Uma Abedin, you know, the wiener. <laughs> Anthony Wiener did a little time for his pulling out his wiener in front of a kid. But that's about it. No real, of all the work, you know, and all the exposure through True Pundit and investigative journalists like George Webb, still not a single Yawan Brothers, still free, running around with ankle bracelets. I, it's just shocking to me. It's just, it's just so disturbing to me that... When, when all things considered, the level of corruption that's still going on and has been, you know, how, how time kind of muddies the, all of that. You know, you got women running around with pink pussy hats, and that's that's their, you know, they, they don't they don't get the bigger problem, which, which is mass political corruption and mass distribution of we wealth to the top one percent divide people. Oh, it's sexism, it's racism, it's Trump, misogynist, sexist. I'm putting on my pink pussy hat and that's going to solve everything. I'm going to go out and march in the street. So anyway, that's my rant for this morning. It's a beautiful day. It's a hurry up and wait. We're in a holding pattern now. Well, I did see something. I saw something in the uh, news, which was pretty interesting. There's a couple of uh, 
police officers down, I believe, in Louisiana. Don't don't hold me to that, but I read this um, piece where these officers came forward and they used the phrase secret audio where they recorded their supervisors. It's of 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 late, so it's not it's not an old case. And they used the term secret audio. Ah, who came up with that? Oh, setting precedents already. Secret audio, police using in court, quoting as secret audio. We're having an effect, people. We are having, a, this case is having an effect. That is my hope. That is my understanding. Not so much, okay, it is about a quota and people getting run over by illegal tickets and illegal arrests across the country. We know that. We know the... the um, misdirection of police forces and city agencies across the country but also the how the employees are affected people like me that are run over you know you know is it whistleblowing is it discrimination is it this and then when you get to courts they try to juggle around oh you didn't you didn't put in the right law oh you didn't get it in long enough in time and 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 oh it's this law and you didn't quote that law and they try to muddy the water Right, and then when they drag the case out for two years, two and a half years burning down the road, that's fine, you know. So this case is 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 important because it's a I'm pro se. I'm doing this, you know, without any without any official legal counsel, right? You know, and that it it it's. Um, it's also First Amendment, the First Amendment right to speak up when you see corruption, when you see, when you feel retaliation, when you experience discrimination. You speak up, that's not insubordination. That's your First Amendment right to speak up. And the Seventh Amendment right, no one can deny you uh, the, the right to, you, to, to a jury, the seventh, seventh Amendment. No one can deny you that. No agency, no fake New York State discriminative human discrimination bullshit can't deny you that. No Article Seventy Eight. No, your your right to to trial by jury is is guaranteed in the U.S. Constitution, and you have a right to f free speech. So all of that is in play in this case. Right? That's why we must win. We must win. It's a must win.